Yes, back five, back three, a new trend. I do not know if it's a new trend. Anyway, you've seen it a few times lately. In the Bundesliga, there is also one or the other team, which is, at the moment, already performing that. Internationally, especially in Italy, it has been seen a few times over the last few years. Some teams played it at the World Cup. Is it a new trend? I don't know. It certainly has advantages, but it also has its disadvantages. I'll come back to it soon. I would not necessarily, and many coaches do so, now jump on this trend immediately. I mean with, you can always counter an argument that we say, we've become world champion with a back four. Our final opponent also played back four. One can also argue against it. The Dutch have become third with a back five. Would you have done that with a back four? Question mark. It's hypothetical. I do not know. Has advantages, has disadvantages. I would like to briefly introduce these here also. The advantages of a back five. Logically, you have one player more in the back. In the back row, I have one more player. That's an advantage. I also have a player more in my defensive center. It is compact in the back row, and that is often. I think, yes, for many teams, the reason why they are playing with it at the moment, experiments, because very often they like to open the play with three players. And the opening of the game out of this, in quotes, back three is, of course, then relatively easy. Disadvantages, you can see it. If I have one less behind, one more, I miss one in front. Then, if I want to defend aggressively, I would like to play high pressing, one player less, and I really miss that. That's why I think if you play with a back five, you probably automatically play a bit deeper. There are certainly exceptions. It always depends on the quality of the players, on the quality of the opponent, but in most cases, this player is missing in front of the ball in order to play pressing in the opponent's half very high. The outside players, we may know that from the early days of the 3-5-2 system, which then had to play on the line, on the side, these track players of course have long ways to get back into order. So, you have to take into account how you want to act accordingly. Of course, there is also the possibility to position three players in front of it, then of course the paths are correspondingly shorter. Both are possible. An advantage is, of course, and that is also an answer to what I've already said, players who play between the chains. That's why teams play with a back five. Because the centre-back can always join the attack, no problem. He goes along, the gap is closed by four players relatively quickly, so nothing happens. And you can see that here too. In the animation, it is very clear that the centre-back can, in this case this player, really go quite a bit out and join. Because behind it is a nice hole. I mean, if there would cross a player into this space, the hole is not open, he occupies the room, nothing happens. So there, and that's what you've seen internationally, that the strikers have been followed 10 to 15 yards, that even a centre back in the position can go along. You can afford that, it's not a problem at all, and it's a possible answer to players between the chains. I simply have more compactness in the rear area, that's certainly an advantage. When defending on the wing, I have the opportunity, as you can see here, to double well, to attack well, to create two-on-one situations, and of course here, if this opponent really goes through in the middle, always compactness. I can also tell the player, push out when he goes through, then I do not have to mention what I just explained to the central defender in the decision, do I stay inwards or do I go out? Since he can get out because I still have enough players in the middle who then take over the strikers accordingly and as a rule there are then three tall players who play there in the defensive centre, usually that's the case. Again a second situation, defending on the wing of with a back five where here, open playing position, which I've just said that the centre back, a centre back draws out to play immediately, play two against one, and I have, as you can see clearly here, two more centre backs who do not have to get out. You can see that, in the back row it has advantages, but of course, if I want to play pressing, I miss this player in the front area, you always have to consider that as a coach. Personally, I'm more of a friend of attacking the enemy earlier, so for me, a back five is not necessarily the topic. But I would not have a problem if I know exactly, we meet an overpowering strong opponent with huge qualities in the middle, in the center, to be able to say sometimes, today we play with five defenders. And that is also a message that I would like to convey in these new seminars. Play variably, defend variably. 
not just being able to play one basic order, but maybe several basic orders, both in possession and against the ball. Having a pressing strategy in mind, but also vary and adapt it. And that, I think, is a very, very important point. If you look at Bayern Munich at the moment, they are not that far in the lead so far, but they vary even during the game the basic order, the way they attack and defend, and that makes them very unpredictable. And I think that's also possible with teams in the lower division, sometimes playing variably. This is not just a question of quality of the players, because we are talking about defensive behaviour here, and defensive behaviour is only shifting first, going to the ball, tackling. There is one who has not gotten that tactical skills left out. It's about first to win balls and goals, to defend the goal, to secure the goal. A back five, that's clear again. I do not want to conceal that now, again very briefly. I have of course certain offensive options which I've just hinted at. You can clearly see it here, forming a dynamic back three in the build-up, which is playing clear a second centre-back with solutions here on the ball side. This is how it is done today in today's professional football, as you see it very often. Teams in the build-up that form that back three. Of course, different than here in the picture, here they are already three. Often this player is a CM who falls into this space. But this is how it is often played. A CM has the ball, starts a dribbling as seen here, trying to bring the two strikers in a pressure situation that at some point a striker attacks. You can see it here, then playing clearer player, and then you have many options on the side which are indicated by the arrows that are coming, I think. Of course there are other options, other solutions, but that's obvious. Of course when I'm five in the back then, I quickly solve the situation with three players and stand in this dynamic chain of three players in the offence. How to defend that, of course, I come to later in the pressing seminar. Because today many teams have big problems in the back, these three players. How do I approach them? How do I attack them? But that comes in the seminar pressing. Graphics and animations in this video were made with easy sports graphics and easy animation, used by over 40,000 coaches worldwide. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. New soccer videos every Tuesday and Thursday.